Hey what's up everyone it's Falcor here and welcome back to the vlog! So it's been a little while but here we are and um, so basically I'm just gonna get straight into it. This vlog is um, harping on back to January when we went to London um, for uh, a long weekend as it were. Well it wasn't a long weekend actually it was Thursday to Friday so <laughs> it was one night but we saw a couple of shows um, and it was a bit of a stressful experience because Ryan actually ended up being on crutches when we went um, which was an unexpected thing that happened but it just happened and um, because on like the Tuesday and we were going on the Thursday he managed to put out his back picking up a bath mat which is what it is um, hilarious is what it is but um, anyway he was on crutches he was in loads of pain and it was very slow going because he could only go as fast as he could go bless him um, but he powered on and we still had a lovely time um, so basically I'm going to hand over to previous me editing all the footage and I'll probably do a little bit of like voiceover to just like you know mosey on things along I didn't do much of the vlogging vlogging because I was kind of like more concerned with just keeping an eye on making sure Ryan was all right he didn't fall down any stairs or anything um so yeah hand over the previous me I'll catch you here at the end Woof! we went to see musicals yesterday didn't we Ryan all right. we saw Frozen and Wicked it was yeah. my sixth time seeing Wicked and Ryan's first time seeing Wicked. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Was that a yes or a no? Yeah. You enjoyed it. Wicked, yes. Yeah. Frozen was okay. It was a, uh, it was Disney. It was the same <coughs> thing as every Disney story ever is. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it was just okay in my opinion. Good production, but like, I don't really understand why everyone's like, loves it. One of the best parts of the production was the um, Big Slug blowout. Big Slug blowout? Yeah, but did you not actually think when it when that bit happened, it was actually quite like random and it launched into it in a in a very rushed and like convoluted, not really explaining what was going on very well kind of way. I suppose. I just think like just the, think the pacing and the scripting of, of, of the whole show was very messy. I just think there was a lot of, like, the set was really good for that. Well, yeah, like, uh, the set was good. But, like, that doesn't mean you're allowed to make the rest of the show a bit now. <laughs> but I feel like that's what it is. I feel like it's all the, it's all the visualness. And it's like, oh, look, Elsa. And everyone's like, Elsa, look at this woman who looks like a drag queen. And, like, uh, it's just, it's just not the one. Anyway, so what are we doing today, Ryan? Uh, we're going to go to the V&A because there's That's a cool. musicals exhibition on there that I want to see about musicals and costumes. National History Museum. I thought you said the National History Museum was a maybe. Maybe, yeah, we've got Maybe National History Museum. We're going to eat today at Mildred's um, and we're going to a Museum of Illusion. Is that right? Called Twist. Twist, which oh, hopefully, Twist hopefully I'm allowed to film in. So I can yeah, get, some, people are. get some footage. Fun. So... Come with us now on this journey in London. Well, here you are. You with Spectral Voice Falcor. So we went to the V&A, and this is the exhibition Reimagining the Musicals. I don't know how much longer it's on for, but it's on. Check it out if you can. Cool stuff. Look at this. Skates from Starlight Express. Costumes from Wicked the Musical. Moulin Rouge the Musical. Set design from Anne Juliet, which is so cool. This is from Annie. Love it. La Cage of Fall, so good I am what I am. Oh, and these were shoes actually worn by Elaine Page in Cats. Super cool. Oh my God, six, the musical, very spangly. This is The Engineer from Miss Saigon, I think. I'm not sure what this one is, but it's a cool top hatted costume. And obviously then we've got everybody's talking about Jamie from the end of the show. Love this. Check out the pom-pom shoes. So cool, I kind of love to wear them. And then they had these cool little models everywhere, like all over the exhibition that I think were like showing like, you know, the people that are in actual theater craft, stage craft, behind the scenes, stuff like that. It was a lovely nod because they were like all over to find them. Uh, after reimagining musicals, we continued into the rest of the theater and performance section. This is like a separate part of like the, the sort of normal standard exhibition that's on there, which is really worth seeing there's lots of set models, lots of old, costumes from like Shakespearean type stuff that's been worn by like super famous people. This is from Matthew Bond Swan Lake which I adore. Obviously Miss Trunchbolt from Matilda. Look at the size of them titties! And this is from the original production of Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Um, 
Edward Scissorhands by Matthew Bourne, of course. I didn't get to see that live on stage. The Lion King, such cool costumes. I love it. I'm not sure what this is, can't remember, but it's pretty cool. It's like some sort of a devil. And of course, Joey from War Horse, which actually was a production that I didn't really like, oddly enough. Anyway, moving on, we went to the Natural History Museum. This is the outside, but we didn't actually enter through this side. We entered through the other side where you uh, are faced with this. Through the earth we went. Um, and yeah, we found Beryl. Who knew Beryl was a rock, uh, which I found slightly fascinating and um, intriguing. But yeah, um, there was this weird earthquake simulator thing, which I'd never seen before. Ryan looks thrilled, as you can see. I, I didn't want him to go in it because I thought he was going to put out some more of his back by like being like kind of wobbled around. But it was fine. It wasn't actually that big of a deal, but just seemed a bit like random and ever so slightly underwhelming. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of parts of the Natural History Museum that I'm feeling are a bit like tired run down but look at it it's such a gorgeous building it's worth seeing just for the building in a way and of course no trip to the natural history museum would be complete without visiting the dinosaur section and seeing the old t-rex of course um which is still pretty cool but as i say the rest of the dinosaur section is just feeling a bit old tired past its best if i'm honest it could do with some sort of refresh i don't know but anyway, moving along. So after this, later on, uh, we went to check out the Twist Museum, which I think is like a pop-up slash temporary thing, um, which is all kind of like visual illusions and things like that. So um, let's go inside and take a look. So this first part was meant to like drain all the colour out because of like the yellow light and the yellow reflections around you or something along those lines. Um, I didn't think it was that great, if I'm honest. But anyway, where did all the colour go? Who knows? Um, and yeah, like I say, it was just lots of like visual illusions, things like that. And um, I'm going to say it was a little expensive for what it is, but it's probably worth seeing if you're into that. Um, I think it cost us like £26 each. Um, and bearing in mind, like it was like a weekday, we went on a Friday. Um, so you'd think if there was such a thing as like off peak that this would be the time for it. But who knows? Um, you'll have to check out the prices for yourself online. It's the Twist Museum, so go look it up. Uh, we saw it from the TikTok and we wanted to go check it out too. Um, but there was lots of cool things in it anyway. It really was worth going to see. I, I, like I say, I, I just wish it was a little cheaper. Um, but there was like things from just like mirrors to like more sort of like technical visual installations. Um, this one was pretty cool. You sort of put your head in it and it like was all like kind of curved and m mirrored that gave this sort of infinite effect which was then um, kind of cool you can see i was excited by that part very very fun and um, you know these infinity boxes that's done with mirrors we've all seen those sort of things before these were cool so like the cone in the middle reflects the outer image to make it like come in to like be the whole image which i thought was really kind of funky um this was just one of those random like endless like kind of mirrors also not that great to be honest uh this is quite an old illusion i think this makes you think of like um, uh, the haunting or something along those lines. This one was a little more of like a technical one. You would like hear pouring water and you had to guess which was hot and which was cold. I didn't, I didn't really manage to get either of them right. So <laughs> there you go. Um, funky light stuff like this, which is pretty cool. And there was like some rotating like sculptures and things like that. This is sort of like that endless movement type illusion, which I do kind of like. Um, and we continued on through. I'm not really sure what was going on here to be honest there wasn't like a great deal of a description this reminds me of things you used to get like in the daily mail when i was a kid um we went into this kind of weird curvy room thing it was just like had a wonky floor and a mirror so yeah you know is what it is um but then oh and if you stand exactly here it looks like you're under the water apparently that's what we did uh but this one was quite cool it's like a forced perspective room because it's all on like a bit of a slant so like if you stand like over in the corner it makes you look like super tiny and if you stand further up you look like huge and um, so that was kind of interesting i liked it but yeah it was just quite an expensive thing to do i suppose but if you do have the money and you want to go along to see it i think it is worth actually seeing so that's kind of it that's the end of our london trip and um let's go back to in real life mean satisfactory voice Whoa! <laughs> well there we go then that was our little trip to london i hope if you found that interesting or enjoyable. So yeah, the Reimagining Musicals exhibition at the Victorian Albert Museum is running until November the um, 
I think it's the 27th, the end of November, basically, this year. So there's plenty of time to catch that, hopefully. Um, and the Twist Museum, I think at the moment, is like currently booking up until the end of April. So not a long time, but it may get extended, who knows. But um, either way, they're both worth seeing, if you ask me. So that's it. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching, okay? I love you. Goodbye. Mwah.